Yo what's going on guys Tanmay here for simple snippets and welcome back to another video tutorial on data structures and algorithms and this is the part 3 of radix sort sorting algorithm where we are simply going to implement and write a c++ program to implement the radix sort sorting now this is just the practical implementation so we've already discussed the working we've already discussed the theory we took an example we saw the pseudo code we dry ran that pseudo code and went step by step so all those things are covered in previous two video tutorials of radix sort in this playlist in this course so i'll link those in the video description do check it out in fact do check out the entire dsa course you'll find a lot of other tutorials as well but with that being said if you're just here for the c++ program for the practical implementation then please watch this video till the end and with that being said let's get started If you're new to my channel, my name is Tanmay Sakpal and I do a lot of computer science and information technology video tutorials like computer programming development, technology talks and a lot more on this channel. So if that's something you're interested into, then definitely subscribe and turn on the notifications to get the latest updates and never miss out on such important topics. Okay, so as you can see, I have already written a little bit of code. You can pause this video and type this code yourself. I highly recommend that you type this code yourself for the best practice. open up your day c++ id or you know whatever c++ id that you're using if you're using turbo c++ use that if you're using any other programming language even then things would work provided that the algorithm is the same but we are using c++ and starting off you can see in the int main that is the starting point of any c++ program that is the main function i have created a integer size then i say enter the size of the array then i take in the size from the user and then i create an array of that size okay so array name is arr i'll put up the pseudo code on the right hand side you can see a black screen where the pseudo code is written according to the pseudo code the first step is to take the input array that's what we are doing over here now if you using turbo c++ you might not be able to create an array with a dynamic size by taking the size from the user in that case you can use the concept of dynamic memory allocation or you can hard code this size for simplicity purpose after creating the array of this size that we take from the user i say see out enter size number of integers in any order so if i enter the size as 5 the text that will be printed on the cmd would be enter 5 integers in any order so this is again step 1 only in the pseudo code that is taking the input taking the input array so this for loop basically takes the input array starts from i equals to 0 to i less than size and then see in arr of i so we are taking every element in the array from the user and you don't need brackets when we have only one statement in the for loop so that's why we don't have curly braces basically but if it is confusing here are the curly braces then i say see out i say before sorting i again use a for loop and this time again from 0 to size i'm just printing out the array this is before sorting okay After that I am calling a function user defined function radix sort which we still have to create so we'll create that over here this is just the main function in that I am passing this array that we've created so if you see the pseudo code of radix sort the two parameters are the array and the size of the array so radix sort is called here we still have to create this function that we'll do in a minute after that obviously the array will be sorted when you're passing a array as a argument in c++ it is passed by address and not by value so whatever changes that are made inside this function on this array will be actually reflected back onto our original array also right so i hope you know what is the concept of passed by value passed by address passed by reference if not i have a very good video explaining these three concepts i'll link that in the video description you can check out the c++ playlist as well but yeah after the radix sort is called again i print after sorting and then again i use a for loop again i output all the array elements but this time they would be in sorted manner and then last statement return zero so this is the int main i did not type it from scratch because then we would be wasting time but now let's get started with creating the radix sort function so i'll say void radix sort and it is going to take a integer array so i'm going to say int arr with opening and closing square brackets to denote that it is a array and it is also going to take a integer size as an argument so that is exactly what we are passing arr and size so this arr and size are variables which are created just for you know this function inside this function so even though the names are same they are two separate variables 
and as I mentioned, this array is going to be passed by address. So when you're passing an array in a function, you don't need to have square brackets. But when you're creating that function, this is the user defined function that time we have to mention these square brackets to denote that this is an array that is going to be passed. Okay. Now, if you see the step two in the pseudocode, the next step is to get the maximum from this array. So I'm going to say int m is equal to get max. Again, I'm going to pass this array and the size of the array. Now again, we have to create this get max function. So we'll create it in a minute, but let's complete the radix sort function. After we get this M, we have a for loop. We say for in div is equal to one M by div should be greater than zero. And the increment is div star equal to 10. Now we've already discussed in detail about these conditions in the previous tutorial when we saw the pseudocode. So I'm not going to repeat it over and over again. Just watch that. That is very important to understand the behind the scenes working. This is just converting the pseudocode into C++ code. But this for loop condition is basically used to call counting sort multiple times. And the number of times counting sort is called is going to be equal to the number of digits that the maximum number has in the array. That is why we call the get max over here. We have that in this M number. So at every iteration of the for loop, the M will be divided by div. First time div will be one, second time it would be 10 and the third time it will be 100 and so on and so forth. So this will happen depending upon the number of digits in the maximum number in the array. And then inside the for loop, we call counting sort. We pass the array size and div. Okay. So that is exactly what we have in the pseudocode as well. So this is the complete radix sort function, but we still have to create the get max and the counting sort function separately. So let's first create get max. So get max you can see is on the RHS, which means that it is returning an integer value because on the LHS we have an integer variable. So I have to say int get max. And of course it is going to take an integer array. So int ARR comma size because that is what we are passing over here, right? The array and the size. Now the first step in the get max pseudocode, as you can see on the right hand side is to declare a max variable and take the first element from the array and store it over there. After that, we call a for loop. We say for int i equals to one i less than size. So we are iterating from one till the size that is le one less than the size and i plus plus. And inside that we have a if condition. We say if arr of i is greater than the max value, then the new max value is going to be the arr of i. Okay, so I've not used brackets anywhere, but if I were to use brackets, this is how it would look like. If we have only one statement inside the if block or for loop, then we don't really need to use the brackets. We can do away with the brackets, but sometimes it gets a little confusing. So yeah, this is how it would look like with brackets. And lastly, we have to say return max. Okay. So this is the get max function. So this get max is called over here. We will get the maximum over here and then we will go inside the for loop. And now we have to create the counting sort function as well. So we've already covered counting sort, the working of counting sort and the implementation of counting sort in a separate tutorial in this playlist itself. So I'm not going to go ahead and type it all together. I'll put up the pseudocode of counting sort over here. The only difference is we are using this div variable to get the LSB that is one digit in the multi digit integer in every iteration. So in first iteration, we are going to get the units place in second, we are going to get the tens place in third, we are going to get the hundreds place for every element, depending upon how many, you know, maximum number of digits we have in one particular in the maximum number. So I'll just paste the code of the counting sort function over here, and then we'll go line by line. And I'll also show the pseudo code on the right. So this is the counting sort function. It is taking an array. It is taking the size of the array and it is taking that div variable. So in the radix sort, you can see counting sort is called. We are passing array size and div. So coming to the counting sort now, step one is to create the output. So we are creating an output array of the same size as the input array. Now the range obviously is going to be 10. We've discussed why it is going to be 10 because in decimal number system, we have only 10 unique elements or 10 digits that is from zero to nine. And since we are applying counting sort on single digit of every number in the array, 
the range obviously is going to go from 0 to 9 only hence you have to create a count array of size 10 and initialize it initially to 0 so this syntax basically makes all elements in the count array zero or you can use a for loop also in the pseudo code you can see in step number 3 and 3.1 we are using a for loop but you can use this syntax also moving on for the 4 and 4.1 step we are taking a count of all the elements and the count is basically taken by taking one single digit of the number starting from the lsb so for the first iteration we are going to take the units place if it is a zero we will come in the array in the count array at the zero location so count of zero will become plus plus if the units place of the number in the input array is let's say 5 then in the count array at the five index position we will come and we will say plus plus so that is what is happening in this for loop in step number 4 and 4.1 so that is this for loop again i have not used brackets because we only have one statement then the next for loop is for taking the cumulative count so count of i plus equal to count of i minus 1 so that would be count of i is equal to count of i plus count of i minus 1 that is exactly what we have in step number 5 and 5.1 now step number 6 and 6.1 in the pseudo code is basically that for loop where we are taking one element from the input array and we are putting it in the output array at a particular position using this newly calculated count array which is the cumulative count which is storing the exact positions and that is done using this expression and then we have to also decrement the count so we are saying count of again using that same expression we go to that index position and say minus minus so this mapping we thoroughly discussed in the previous video where we discussed the pseudo code please watch that for better understanding here you might not understand it if you try to you know dry run it you can even dry run it over here but that's where we already have dry run it so you will understand that much better and this last for loop is again taking the output array and transferring all the elements from the output array to the input array so yeah this is the entire code i am obviously going to be sharing this entire code along with the theory along with all the details for radix sort sorting whatever things we've discussed in the previous three videos of this radix sort topic i'm going to be sharing all of that on our official website so you'll see that link in the video description if you are preparing answers if you are you know writing the code you want to copy paste the code you want to prepare your answers go through that article that will have all the information and we've pretty much done with the code let's save this and try to compile and run i hope we don't get any errors and we did get an error okay so this has to be int size and i think we are good to go okay our code is running fine let's enter the size of the array let's say we have a array of size 5 now we have to enter any integers in any order so i'm going to say 55 43 1 6 7 8 and 5 so 1 2 3 4 and 5 So the maximum number over here is six seven eight. It has three digits, so counting sort will be called three times when I hit enter. So there you go. Before sorting, I'm getting the same array fifty five forty three one six seven eight and five. But after sorting, you can see I'm getting one five forty three fifty five and six seven eight. So this is properly sorted, which means that our radix sort is working perfectly fine. Okay so that's it for this video guys this was the implementation the practical aspect of radix sort where we wrote a c++ program to implement radix sort which essentially uses counting sort multiple times so that's it for this video guys if you understood this code if you like this video please give it a thumbs up do share this video in fact do share this entire dsa course dsa playlist with your friends this is a very fundamental topic there are a lot of many other topics inside this course let me know in the comments how this video was and i'll see you guys in the next one peace